hello, my name is Pastor D.W. West and I want to welcome you back to the Sunriser this morning. We have a brand new series that we have started called The Way and we are just going to dive right into the way of Jesus Christ today. Uh, before we move any further, it's only proper that we have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, as we are about to go into this new series, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be present. We pray that you will hide the preacher behind the shadows of the cross so that I will not be seen nor heard, but that we will see Jesus and we will hear Jesus and we'll be sure to give him all the praise and the honor and the glory as we pray it all in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen. And we're going to send you right to the studio now as we start our series, The Way. I saw the room, the table set, my closest friend on my chest. I saw the towel around my waist, broken bread and wine were blessed. I saw my traitor choose the dark as he went into the night to sell me for a price. I saw the moon. The olive trees, my friends, all asleep. I saw the agony. Is there another way? Can this cup pass from me? I saw the keys. I heard the words. I don't know him. Search the crowd. My friends are gone. I'm all alone. And then was too high to pay so I could be with you in the end can wait to drink that cup with you the tribe, he washed his hands, they screamed someone else's name, and even though they didn't choose me, I chose them, I saw the crown of thorns, purple robe, vile scorns, crushing weight of My broken heart nails pierce my skin. I saw the struggle for each breath. Felt the weight of the sin. I said the words, Father, forgive. Hell between heaven and earth. Before the
And now we are going to move in to a new series called The Way. And before we move into that, I think it's very important that tonight we talk about the way of the cross. In fact, we live in this world filled with options and opportunities and the paths that we have available to choose from are endless. And we often struggle to find the right path and the correct direction and the way of peace in a world of noise and chaos and busyness. And in the midst of it all stands Jesus, who calls us to deny ourselves, lay down our lives, and to follow him. In fact, it says in Revelation 3 verse 20, he's knocking on our heart's door. He's wanting us to let him in, but there is so much secularism in the church. There's so many people arguing over what color the carpet should be and arguing what the music should be like and what the preaching should be like that they can't even hear Jesus knocking on the door. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we live in this world of chaos and noise, and it seems that the running list of distractions only increase every day and every year. And Father, I'm left with this growing feeling that all I really want is to know you more and more and to follow you wholeheartedly and unashamedly. And Father, help us. Help us as we pick up our crosses and follow you. Father, protect us from the lies of the evil one who seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. And Father, we just ask right now that you will hide me behind the shadows of the cross of Calvary so that I will not be seen nor heard, but that Jesus may be seen and that Jesus may be heard, Father. And we praise you for your unfailing sacrificial love as we pray it in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen. Now, I don't know if you played it or not, but I, I want to ask you, have you ever played the game Mad Libs before? You know, that delightfully unpredictable game where you fill in the blanks with various parts of speech resulting in a hilarious and often non uh uh, a non-fiction type story, or I mean a fictional story. It's a game that is filled with twists and turns and unexpected surprises and sometimes even in a few moments of confusion. It is funny how similar life can feel at times to a disconnected mad lib. Now, the truth is we live in this world filled with options and opportunities. There are paths that we have available to choose from and they are endless and we often struggle to find the right path and the correct direction and the way of peace in a world of noise and of chaos. And as believers, we trust that in the midst of all of this stands Jesus who calls us to deny our ourselves, lay down our lives, and to follow him. Go on and say amen, somebody. In fact, tonight, in Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to 38, Jesus presents with us uh, a profound call to follow him wholeheartedly, embracing the way of the cross while letting go of our own preconceptions, you see, and expectations about what life is supposed to be like. And make no mistake, it's a challenging passage, but it isn't the alternative. Difficult. You see, a life without Christ is a life of getting everything that we want but then losing him. So if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and go with me to Mark chapter 8. We're going to look at verses 31 to 38. We're in Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. And, and here we are, and, and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spoke this word openly. And then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. And But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. And when he had called 
the people to himself, the disciples also. He said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Somebody go on and say amen. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his his soul. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with holy angels. Brothers and sisters, this is literally tipping the scales for Jesus. Every year, millions upon millions of human souls are passing into eternity, unwarned and unsaved. Days and weeks and months are passing, and we have one day, one week, one monthless in wit, month less in which to do our work. You see, if you put into one scale Jesus, which means eternal treasure, life, truth, heaven and the joy of Christ in souls redeemed and put into the other every attraction the world can offer. You see, we wait for time and for eternity. And while you are thus engaged, Christ says, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Lord, have mercy. See, brothers and sisters, To begin, Jesus speaks very plainly about his impending death in verse 31 of chapter 8, detailing the rejection and the suffering that he's going to face at the hands of the religious elites and fellow Israelites. And all of this, he says, will lead ultimately to his death. And Peter specifically cannot even fathom what's being said as it has no place in his own paradigm and expectation of what kind of things should and shouldn't happen to the Messiah of Israel. And in verse 32, Peter even goes so far as to rebuke Jesus. Imagine rebuking Jesus. Now, in response, Jesus re rejects Peter in the most um, vicious way here imaginable by saying, get behind me, Satan. One commentator puts it this way, without realizing it, Peter was tempting Jesus in the very same way that Satan did in the wilderness. And Satan tried to get Jesus to win human allegiance in any way but Calvary. And Peter did not realize that Jesus' suffering and death was the plan of God. And there it is, the importance, the imperative nature of the cost of the cross, that Jesus suffering and death was the plan of God. And Peter did not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Lord have mercy. You see, this takes us right to the way of the cross. This takes us to the way of the cross. When we look at verses 34 and 35, it would seem here that in response to his conversation with Peter, Jesus takes it upon himself to speak very plainly about following him, its cost, and the way, and we are starting this series the way in which it all works out for Jesus. He calls the crowds, he calls the disciples, and he calls them all over, and he teaches them. Well, notice a universal invitation to be Jesus' disciples, and there is always a cost. Salvation is free, but discipleship is necessary and very expensive personally because we must deny ourselves. This takes us all the way back to the fall in Genesis chapter 3 when mankind's independence and self-centeredness was their goal of life. But now believers must return to selfless dependence on God. And salvation is the restoration of the image of God and humanity from the damage in the fall that happened with Adam and Eve. And this allows intimate fellowship of the Father, which is the goal of creation. And this is why we have Sabbath every week, because it is a memorial of our Creator so that we can spend time 
with our Savior. Go on and say amen, somebody. You see, in after one has successfully denied themselves, there must be a taking up of the cross. In fact, originally this phrase, take up your cross, referred to a condemned criminal having to carry his own crossbar to the place of the crucifixion. And this was the cultural imagery for a painful, shameful death. And in this context, it refers to death to our old sinful nature. And the gospel is a radical call for once and for all fellowship, discipleship, and just taking the call for Jesus. In fact, as Jesus laid down his own life for others, we must also follow his example. As Jesus says, whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. This is the very piece of the equation that Peter was missing and that many of us miss. You can't have it both ways. You cannot say pieces of your old life that you want and have all the blessings of abundant life in Christ. We must be completely put off of our old selves, deny it, take up our cross as we follow Christ into eternity. And after all, what good is it if we gain the whole world, but forfeit our soul in the process? In fact, you see in verses 36 and 37, what a soul is worth. You see, many of us have heard stories of rich and famous, right? Rich and famous who are gaining fame, worldwide fame, riches and notoriety. And, and they came to this conclusion that there was still something missing from their lives. And one of my favorite quotes to this end comes from this funny man, and you may know him. His name is Jim Carrey, who said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so that they can see that it is not the answer. I wish somebody'd say amen. You see, how much of your own personal and professional disillusionment comes from chasing things that do not matter, hoping that they will satisfy the deep longing of our souls. In fact, in Psalm 37 and verse 4, it says this, take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You see, the twist that is happening in this verse is that he is the deep desire of our heart. I wish I had a witness in this place. You see, to delight in the Lord is to delight in the one whom we most desire. And as the ancient church fathers said, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. So again, what is a soul worth? And maybe a better question is, what's your eternal peace and contentment worth? Is there anything worth trading away for the eternal grace and unfailing love that we find in Jesus Christ? You see, I came to the church in 1995 and I left for many years. And a lot of you have heard my testimony. I gave it the, the first time uh, on the amazing word. And I gave you my testimony that I had shared in West Virginia and and you see, I came back into the church and I would received a phone call. And at the time, I was a cocaine addict and, a, and now I'm a recovering alcoholic and I was drinking. And it seemed like things were going so well for me, but I was rotting from the inside. And my marriage was in shambles. But the Lord, literally overnight, saved my life. And he was able to remove the drugs from my life. He was able to remove the pain from my life. And it took a lot of time and it took a lot of work. But Christ said, I want you to follow me. He said, whom shall I send? And I said, send me. I will go. And when we become willing, it does not matter what we've been through because recovery makes our process possible for us to go out and share the progress from that process with other people to disciple others to Jesus Christ 
from the recovery that was made possible by somebody else who poured Christ into us. I, are you following me? I sure wish somebody go on and say amen. You see, once we know Jesus, we truly come to know the beauty of this abundant life, and it's from that place, this redeemed place, that we can truly live wholeheartedly, un unashamedly for him and him alone, which brings us to 38, wholeheartedly and unashamedly. In verse 38, Jesus warns against being ashamed of him and his words, and he promises that those who are unashamedly devoted to him in this life will be honored by him in the next, and following Christ wholeheartedly means prioritizing our relationship with him above all earthly concerns, regardless of the opinions and the reactions of others. Think of the apostle Paul who declared, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Go on and say amen. That comes from the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. And despite facing opposition and persecution, Paul remained steadfast in his commitment to preach the gospel and unashamedly proclaiming the truth of Christ. And Paul could do this because he had encountered the radical transformative love of Christ and he left all his worldly accomplishments and prestige behind when he found the Savior of this world. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I had a chance. I was offered a $150,000 contract to play music, but I gave it all up to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. You see... Paul wanted to preach the gospel unashamedly, proclaiming this truth of Christ. And he could do this because he had encountered a radical transformative love of Christ. And he left all his accomplishments of the world. He left all the prestige behind when he found the Savior of this world, Jesus. I'm wrapping up here. I'm wrapping up. Brothers and sisters, as we reflect on Christ's words in Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to 38, let us be challenged to live unashamedly and passionately for Christ, embracing the way of the cross, denying ourselves and following him wholeheartedly is never an easy task, but it is essential for a life that honors God. You see, what things and what titles and what future wants and desires are standing in the way of your relationship with Jesus? What things are keeping you from going all in with Jesus Christ? You need to ask yourself tonight, is there anything in this life worth trading away an eternal future with Christ and all the redeemed saints of heaven? And may we like the early disciples and apostles throughout history, boldly declare our allegiance to Christ and live out our faith without reservation. My prayer is that we can pray for strength and wisdom and courage to walk in the way of the cross each day, knowing that our ultimate reward is only found in Jesus and Jesus alone. There's going to be a way to make a decision up on the screen. And the decision tonight is that we must follow Jesus with all our heart. We must deny who we are. We must empty ourselves of who we are. And we must be filled up with His Holy Spirit. If that's something that you want to do, if you want to make that decision for Jesus today, Amazing Media is going to pop up a way that you can make a decision to be emptied of yourself and to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you so much for your love for us. Father, we ask now that your Holy Spirit will empower us. Give us grace, mercy, love, and wisdom to be able to do the work that you have called us to do 
for you are the way and the truth and the life, and nobody will get to you except through Jesus. Father, lead and guide and direct our steps in every single thing we do. Forgive us where we are a mess. As we know, the word saints is just a word used for the mixed up and the messed up. And, you know, we are in this hospital, maybe, maybe better suited. It's an insane asylum. Father, help us to empty ourselves of who we are and fill us up with who you are. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen.